Tesla's artificial intelligence division has created a very special and very powerful new type of supercomputer, and they're calling it Dojo. This is a project that has been quietly evolving behind the scenes at Tesla for years now, and Dojo has already changed into something that could reinvent the supercomputer as we know it. The AI wars have begun, and Dojo might be the best weapon in Tesla's arsenal. As artificial intelligence becomes a larger part of our daily lives, for better or worse, it's triggered a steep rise in demand for a very specific resource, compute. Because AI isn't like traditional software, it can't just be written into existence. You need a model, you need data, and then you need to bring those two elements together in some kind of techno-alchemy that I can't even begin to explain. We typically call this process training, but that doesn't really matter because all we're talking about here is the machine that facilitates the training, the supercomputer. Supercomputers have historically been used for very high-level scientific endeavors, sequencing the human genome, predicting the weather, understanding the function of diseases and viruses, so the need for a supercomputer was relatively limited. It was a niche product. But this is no longer the case. Now, every tech company in the world is competing in an arms race to build out their very own supercomputer cluster, and they are using these things expressly for artificial intelligence development. The trick to wrapping your head around how a supercomputer works is to remember that we are not actually talking about one big computer. It's actually a collection of smaller computers that can all work together as a singular machine. The term often used here is parallel computing, and the best analogy for this is the F1 pit crew. When many people attack the problem from multiple angles all at once, the work can get done incredibly fast. So instead of one big processor trying to brute force its way through a large number of calculations, we actually want a whole lot of smaller processors that are each handling a small number of calculations. The device of choice for this purpose is actually a graphics processing unit, or a GPU, or what a lot of people would call a graphics card. These are great for playing video games and rendering digital video, but they also turned out to be very well adapted to running parallel calculations. This is how NVIDIA quickly became the hottest tech company in the world over the past year. They were already in a prime position as an industry leader in GPU technology. All they really had to do was optimize their existing design for supercomputer clusters and AI training applications. I'm not a stock analyst by any means, but if you want a simple graph that illustrates the AI computing explosion, just look at the five-year chart of NVIDIA stock. Even if you had bought at the height of the pandemic bubble in 2021, you would still have tripled your money already. If you'd done the same thing with Tesla stock, over half of your money would be gone right now. So that alone is reason enough for Tesla to be throwing their hat into the supercomputer ring, and in this case, being a little late to the party can prove to be a massive advantage for Tesla's own supercomputer design. Flashback to five years ago, and the only people who really cared about NVIDIA were hardcore PC gamers fiending for their next graphics upgrade, but as the AI industry began to emerge out of Silicon Valley, NVIDIA was quickly finding a vast new market of very high-profile customers. So all that the company had to do was make an even bigger and more powerful version of the product that they were already selling with no expense spared. This gave us the A100 GPU in the year 2020, which quickly became the benchmark device for AI training compute. The A100 was so good that by the summer of 2021, Tesla had installed nearly 6,000 of them at the company's data center to help train the full self-driving beta AI model. At a starting price of $10,000, that would have cost Tesla somewhere near $100 million just for the GPU hardware alone. So it's no surprise that around this time, Tesla was already well into the development of a plan to design and build their own supercomputer. And unlike NVIDIA, Tesla was not already invested in any existing computer chip architecture, so they were free to design any kind of chip and computer system that they could imagine, one that was specifically optimized from the ground up for the next generation of high-performance computing. Tesla has always embraced two very important strategies in their business development. One is called vertical integration, and the other 
is first principles thinking, and both apply to Project Dojo. Vertical integration is essentially just bringing as much of your supply chain as possible under your own roof. So Tesla vehicles, for example, they make their own seats, their own windows. Tesla manufactures a lot of their own battery cells and battery modules. They make their own motors. This way, they're never at the mercy of a supplier. They don't pay a markup on their components, and Tesla always gets exactly what they want from each component because they built it specifically for their own purpose. It's a lot of upfront cost to establish a vertically integrated company. It didn't happen overnight, but in the long run, it's vastly more sustainable. First principles thinking is all about approaching a unique problem with an equally unique solution that's built from the ground up, which is not how most people solve problems. The most common reasoning system people use is by analogy. You take something that's already similar to the outcome you want and then modify that to fit your needs. The first Tesla Roadster is a great example. Take a pre-existing sports car and modify it to become a new electric sports car, which is fine as a tech demonstration, but it wasn't a sustainable product, whereas the Tesla Model S was designed from the wheels up to be an electric car, and that same vehicle is still on sale to this day, so there might be something to this. Dojo is a bespoke hardware platform that was designed from the ground up by Tesla's AI division, exclusively for use in training their latest computer vision, video-based, full self-driving networks. The goal being to create a digital duplicate of the human visual cortex and brain function, then use that to drive a car autonomously. This involves processing vast amounts of visual data, which in this case is video captured by the vehicle cameras. All of that information from billions of frames of digital video needs to be translated into a language that the AI model can understand. This is called labeling, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You are just assigning a designation to a cluster of pixels so that the AI knows what it's looking at. The more labels that network has to draw from, the better it's going to get at recognizing patterns and making associations. Dojo exists on its base level as something called a system on a chip, which is an entire computer assembled on one single piece of silicon. This is not exactly new, it's the same kind of system that runs your smartphone. This method allows for a spectacular level of efficiency because instead of having all these PCI ports and wires and motherboards and stuff all connected together, every time that signal moves through a connector, it gets slowed down and it loses energy. Now, every necessary component lives on the same little square of semiconductor material, meaning that there are zero bottlenecks between the critical components of the computer system. The Dojo chip is about the size of the palm of your hand, which is a lot smaller than an A100 GPU, but Dojo isn't supposed to exist as just a single chip. Dojo really becomes functional on the tile level, which is the point where multiple chips are fused together to function as one system. This is how we get that parallel computing aspect that makes this a true supercomputer. With the Dojo tile, Tesla has integrated 25 Dojo chips to create one unified computer system that can distribute calculations across a decentralized network of individual processing chips. And each tile contains all of the necessary hardware for power, cooling, and data transfer. It's a self-sufficient computer in itself, made up from 25 smaller computers. Then, going one level up, they integrate six tiles together into one single rack unit, and then to make one cabinet, they integrate two of the racks into one case. And this is just Dojo version 1. Dojo version 2 is the latest reveal, and this comes from Tesla's chip manufacturing partner, TSMC, the world's largest microchip fabricator. TSMC produced the D1 chip for Tesla that has been operating at the company's data centers over the past two years, and they've just teased a new design for the D2 chip that takes the Dojo concept to the next level. So D1 was all about a system on a chip, which was fitting all of your components onto one silicon square the size of a palm, and then linking 25 of those squares together into a tile. But we know that anytime you connect separate chips together, you create a bottleneck that slows down information. So the D1 solution is good, but it's flawed. D2 is an evolution of that concept that puts the entire dojo tile onto a single wafer of silicon. Stick with me here. This is a silicon wafer. It's a thin sheet of semiconductor material about the size of a dinner plate. 
This is the foundation that all computer chips are built on. The usual thing to do is to assemble as many chips on a single wafer as possible and then cut each chip out like a cookie. That way you maximize the yield of each silicon wafer and you have the ability to just throw away or mark down any of the chips that either failed or don't reach full function. Making chips is hard, sometimes they don't work and oftentimes they only partially work. Did you know that in some cases, if you are not buying a top of the line CPU, then you are probably getting a partially broken version of it that they didn't want to throw away? That's why most companies don't do system on a wafer. In fact, aside from Tesla, there is only one other chip designer doing wafer scale processing. That's Cerebrus, and they claim that their third generation chip is now the fastest AI processor on Earth. The Cerebrus chip has over 46,000 square millimeters of surface area and contains 4 trillion transistors. So what you end up with is one big-ass chip that harnesses the power of 25 processors that can all communicate with zero bottlenecks in between to act like one super processor. That means incredibly high bandwidth, incredibly low latency, and superior power efficiency than the D1 tile or literally any other computer system in the world. At the same time that they were showing off the new Dojo system on a wafer, TSMC used the opportunity to hint at even greater things to come. The chipmaker will be scaling up their technology over the next three years to offer even more advanced wafer scale systems, saying that by 2027, they will be able to provide 40 times more computing power than today's systems. So we might as well just declare this game over. Tesla wins, right? Well, not really. There's a pretty big difference between designing a chip or even building a chip and actually deploying said chip in a large-scale supercomputer and getting it working as intended. That part is really, really difficult. This is why Tesla is still buying NVIDIA chips to train their self-driving AI. Tesla never stopped buying NVIDIA hardware and they have no plans to stop anytime soon. Last summer, Tesla activated a new training cluster with 10,000 of the latest H100 GPU, each valued at around 30 grand. It's been recently claimed that Tesla has up to 35,000 H100s in their possession as of May 2024 and has plans to spend billions more on NVIDIA hardware in this year alone. So we have to look at Dojo as a long-term bet and a risky one. Even Elon Musk has admitted that Dojo is not a sure thing. It has potential to pay off to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars, but could just as easily become another great idea that never went anywhere.